Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part eight of my tutorial on how to make Android apps. This is going to be a really exciting video for me to make anyway. And in this one, I'm going to finish the conversion app. I'm going to go over UML modeling and when you know you want to use different UML modeling tools to be able to completely structure your app. I'm also going to cover how to create a flexible class with enumerated types. I'm going to show you how to change components dynamically and a whole bunch more. So I have a lot to do. So let's get into it. Okay, so for future tutorials, I decided I wanted to use an action bar activity, and to add that, all you have to do is just put action bar activity inside of there, and then come up here and make sure that this import shows up inside of there, this guy right there. Of course, all the code is in the description. And then what you're going to need to do is go in here and get your build gradle, this guy, open that up. And you can see inside of here that I went ahead and increased this to 20, and this to 20, this to 14, this to 20, and I didn't touch anything else. And then so that I could use all of that stuff I just showed you, I put in this final line right there. Okay, so that's important to know in regards to how to increase the version of the Android SDK. And as the different versions of the Android SDK progress and become stable on every operating system, I'm going to progress and increase them. All right, so now let's get back into actually creating our app. All right, so when I left you off, we finished on create and among other things. And of course, if you didn't watch part seven, you pretty much have to, otherwise this will be massively confusing. Okay, so I'm going to come in here and I'm going to continue using my use case description to describe everything here. Another thing that's going to happen is we are going to see when the basic use case description no longer works, which is very important. So this is for all the people that keep asking me, what is different about this tutorial? This one's going to go into a lot more depth. I'm going to create a quantity class, and that's going to make it very easy for me to be able to go and convert from different types. I'm going to jump over in a presentation and explain why. All right, so here I am. What, let's just say that we want to convert from one gallon to cups. That's going to equal 16 cups, which we just multiply whatever is in gallons times 16 and get that. Seems really simple. And then what we could do is also, you're going to see different conversion types here or different ways to convert from gallons to cups. We would divide by the same number here as we would multiply down here to convert backwards and forwards between gallons and cups. Seems pretty elementary. The only problem is what happens whenever we also want to be able to convert between gallons, cups, teaspoons, tablespoons, ounces, pints, quarts, gallons, pounds, milliliters, liters, milligrams, and kilograms. All of a sudden, everything gets much more complicated. However, if we instead decide that we are always going to convert from whatever this value is to teaspoons, and then from teaspoons to the desired final unit of measure, the world gets much more simple. In this situation, for each different unit type we want to support, we just need to have a number inside here that's going to allow us to convert from teaspoons to cups, let's say, and from cups to teaspoons. And I'm going to demonstrate using enumerated types exactly how we're going to do that. And how we're going to do that is we're going to create a quantity class and it's going to contain a value and a unit enumerated type. And we're going to create all this. If you don't know anything about enumerated types, don't worry, you'll see them in quite detail. I'm going to have to define an enumerated type for each unit type, and it's going to be how to convert from teaspoons and how to convert you know, to whatever the desired type is going to be. I'm going to have to get the conversion for each unit type from teaspoon, which is going to be what we call our base unit. We're going to be converting from and to teaspoons each time. We're also going to receive the number of teaspoons for the starting unit. And we're basically going to do that so that we can go from the beginning unit over into the teaspoon version of it and be able to save that and then work with it so that we can convert from teaspoons to whatever we want to get to. Have to convert to the base unit teaspoons and as you saw in the previous slide to do that we're going to divide by the base unit stick with me if that's not making sense it will we're also going to convert to another unit other than teaspoons and to do that we're going to multiply by the base unit what else are we going to have to do with this we're going to have to have a constructor that's going to receive the value and the unit type. And then finally we have to create a two string method that is going to print out the value and unit type. And let's just say that we want that to be two four decimals. I don't know. And to really understand this you really should print this out so that you'll be able to see it in front of you while I'm creating the code. 
So I am over in App Inventor again, and what I'm going to need to do here is come over here and right click and new and Java class, and I'm going to create exactly what I just showed you. It's going to be a quantity class, and I'm going to hit OK. And a whole bunch of people have been asking me not to zoom in these videos as much. Uh, I'd like to hold a vote if you guys would please help me with that and tell me zoom or not to zoom. I don't know how many people watch these if you full screen, and I, I basically just do what you guys want me to do. Okay, so each unit or each object that we're going to create in this quantity class is going to have both a value and a unit of measure. So I'm going to create these as finals because they are not going to change. They are going to be unique value. And I'm also going to come in here and create a unit of type unit, which is going to be an enumerated type that I create here in a second. Now enumerated types use a constant key to represent a value. And by using that, they're going to allow us to easily define how to convert all of the other types of measure so that we'll be able to turn or convert from teaspoon to anything. And then we're also going to be able to make the conversion from a starting type to teaspoons and backwards and forwards. It's going to make our life really simple. And to create this enumerated type, I'm going to create this as a static because it's part of the class. And I'm going to call it unit, of course. And then inside of it, I need to define every single thing that I want to use inside of here. So for teaspoon, well, since we're going to be converting using teaspoons as our base type, we're going to have teaspoons be one. Then to convert to tablespoons, which is this guy right here, we're going to convert that to 0.333 because it takes three teaspoons to equal a tablespoon. For cups, we're also going to come in here and zero point, you just saw this guy just a second ago, and there it is. And then I'm gonna put all the rest of those in there. And there is every conversion, both from teaspoons the whole way through kilograms, all right? Now what I'm gonna to need to do is come in here and define that teaspoon will be our base unit of measure. Everything will at some point be a teaspoon no matter what it is. So we're gonna to have to go in here and go final, static, unit, and base unit is equal to teaspoons. There that is. I'm also going to hold the number of teaspoons from the original unit because we're going to eventually convert something into a teaspoon. And that guy is going to be stored in our double by base unit. That's where that's going. Then we're going to also have to receive the number of teaspoons the starting unit is going to be equal to. And this is going to be double, and I'll just call this in teaspoons because it's going to be whatever the original thing is in teaspoons. This by base unit is equal to in teaspoons. We're also going to have to be able to convert any other unit value to the number of teaspoons. So public double to base unit sounds good. And it's going to receive a double, which is going to be the original. And if I want to convert it to teaspoons, I just go return value divided by base unit. Okay, just like we saw before in the presentation part. And of course, we're going to have to be able to convert to another unit as well from teaspoons. So we're going to go public double from base unit and make this double as well. It's going to receive a double, of course, and it's going to return whatever that value is times the base unit. So that is how we're going to be able to convert backwards and forwards. Now, of course, we're also going to have to create a constructor like I documented in the use case description. So it's just going to be a quantity and every single quantity is going to have a value and a unit type. And we can call the constructor. It's not going to matter though. One thing that is important, we're going to have to come in here and go this value is equal to the value that was passed in. This is our object. And we're also going to have to go unit because we need to store units and values. And we keep on going. Now let's convert from teaspoon to the desired unit type. And to do that, we'll just go public. It's going to return a quantity, if I spell quantity correctly. Let's just call this two, just to keep it simple. And I like to use really long descriptive names, but sometimes really short names are even more descriptive. And here, I'm gonna go unit and get the old unit that was passed inside of here, make it equal to this unit. And then we're gonna go return new and we're gonna create a new quantity. And we're just going to get the new unit, which is what was passed into this. We're gonna convert from our base unit by passing in the old unit to base unit and pass the value in there. And then we're going to put our new unit right there. And now all we need to do is come in here and create the to string method. And I just find it easier to just come in here and go public string to string and also come in here and put override. 
and then I'm going to want to format this to so that it will only show a maximum of four digits in our double. And to do that, we're going to go new and decimal format and then define it inside of here. So I'll put a number sign and then four zeros. And then whenever they try to print out our object, it's going to print out a nicely formatted little guy for us. So what we're going to do is say that we want the value to be shown there. Plus, um, we're also going to have to get the, well, make sure you put a plus sign there too, the unit, which is going to make everything display nicely on the screen. And that's all we need to do for our quantity object. Now we're going to go back over into the use case and look into how we're going to finish up main activity and finish our app. All right, so what did we say? We said we want to finish up main activity. So what do we do here? Put in a four, and let's say that we want to finish the main activity. Activity. How are we going to do that? Well, what's going to happen is after they change an item. So an item is changed in the spinner or by the spinner. Well, what's going to happen? Well, the first thing we want to do is we want to verify or check if I'm converting from teaspoons or not. This is a sign that more than likely your use case description is no longer going to work for you for describing this, which I'm going to show you a new way to do it. Then what I'm going to do is if I am, check if I'm updating teaspoons or not. See, I'm going to be converting backwards and forwards between teaspoons. There's a lot of if, then, else sort of things going on here. If I'm converting from teaspoons to something, well, I can just immediately convert from teaspoons to something. If, however, I'm converting from cups to gallons, well, first I have to convert from cups to teaspoons and then from teaspoons to gallons. See, it gets kind of complicated. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and create what's called an activity diagram to help you really understand what's going on here. Okay, so here's the activity diagram. I would have loved to draw this all for you live, but I have a UML tutorial, which I'll put a link in the description to if you want to learn how this stuff really works step by step. But to keep everything and keep this video short, I'm just going to, I drew it ahead of time. Okay, so what am I going to do here? Well, this is going to be the point in time in which the user changes the unit type in the spinner, as the little note here says. Well, then what I'm going to do in my code is check if I'm converting from teaspoons and if I am, I want to update my unit type using teaspoons. So I'm going to convert from teaspoons to whatever. Well, I also need to check if I'm updating teaspoons. Why that's important is I want to make sure that the value that they put in the editable text box is actually going to be transposed down into teaspoons in our little grid view. If yes, in that situation, I'm updating teaspoons, well then what I want to do is get the value in the editable text box, and I want to set the text to teaspoons in the teaspoon text view, okay? If not, if I'm not updating teaspoons, well, in that situation, I want to update each text view using teaspoons, which means basically I'm going to convert from teaspoons to the preferred type, and then I'm going to set the text in the correct text view. See? Kind of boxed in and nice. If I would have tried to explain this in a use case description like I was previously, probably would have got really complicated and confusing. All right, so let's jump back up here. And these are each going to be methods, each one of these guys that I documented inside of these rounded off rectangles. So let's jump back up here. Check if I'm converting from teaspoons. No, I am not. Well, in that situation, I'm going to have to create a method that's going to update the unit type using some other way of converting. So what this is going to do specifically is convert from the current unit type to teaspoons and then convert from teaspoons to the preferred type and then set the text view appropriately. All right, now what I'm going to do down here is check if the unit in the spinner is equal to the current text view. I'm doing that exactly the same thing that I'm doing here. If yes, make the values equal for the like units. So whatever is in the editable text box is going to go into the correct unit. So if it is tablespoons, for example, in the spinner, and it says one, then I want to make sure down in the text views that it's four tablespoons, I also have the same exact value. If no, then I'm going to do nothing. Everything's going to be set properly. Okay? And then what I also did, well, I thought it would be a good idea, is I created what is called a class diagram. And you can see right here, quantity, each quantity object is going to have a value which is going to be of type double. It's going to have a unit of type unit. I'm going to have to convert from or to the base unit. I'm also going to be able or have to convert from the base unit. And then I'm going to have a constructor. And then this guy down here is going to do our little conversions just like we created. And then I have two string down here. And then here is the enumeration 
and each number that is going to line up with each enumerated type. A lot of stuff. Again, you guys, I'll put this on my website. You should print this out. Everything on my website is free, by the way. You should print this out and have it sitting in front of you while I finish main activity. So let's jump over and finish main activity. Okay, so what I'm going to have to do, I'm going to have to check if I'm converting from teaspoons. So to do that, I'm going to create a method, and it is not going to return anything. And I'm going to check if converting from teaspoons. And it's going to receive a string, which is going to be the current unit. And then I'm going to say if the current unit equals teaspoons or teaspoon. And I'm going to keep this really simple because I knew the quant I could make or eliminate all these if then else statements, but I'm going to try to keep everything a little bit simple from now on. Well, then what I want to do is I want to update the unit type using teaspoons. And I'm going to do that by passing in the quantity unit. And this is the reason why the enumerated type was static, and it is going to pass as a teaspoon. Else, now I'm going to come in here and go if the current unit equals tablespoon, and I'm going to have a brand new one just like I documented in the activity diagram. Update unit types using other. So the teaspoon part's going to be the only one that's special. And then I'll create these ones as well. Quantity, unit, tablespoon. And then just to save ourselves some time, I went and created those for every single different unit type. So we're going to call this guy if it is, whoops, we're going to call this guy, which we're going to create in a second, if we're working with teaspoons, and we're going to call this guy if we're working for anything other than teaspoons. So let's go and let's create this method right here. Come down here, and this is going to be public void and update unit types using teaspoons. Let's move this over here. And what's it going to be passed? Well, it's going to be passed a quantity, of course, because that's what we're passing it. And it's going to be unit type, and we're going to call this current unit. Inside of this, we're going to have to convert the value in the editable text box to a double. And to do that, we're going to go double to convert. And to convert it, just go double dot parse double. Pass in the amount text view, and we're going to get the text from our amount text view, and then we're going to convert it into a string, just like that. Okay, so now we have that double that we're going to have to convert. Now we want to combine the value to the unit, so string, and I'm going to say teaspoon, because that's the only thing I have to worry about, because only the teaspoon one is going to be called here. I'm going to call it teaspoon value and unit, makes a lot of sense, and double to convert, whoops, there we go, and then at the end of that, I'm just going to put a space and teaspoon, there we go. Now after I have that, I can go and call my teaspoon text view and set the text for that guy to the teaspoon value and unit. It seems if everything is written out here long, it makes more sense to me, and it's very easy to figure out what the code is doing. Now all I need to do is update all the unit text fields, and to do that, I'm going to call update unit text fields using teaspoon, because teaspoon is what I have at the top. And to do so, I'm going to pass in the double to convert. I'm also going to, again, like I said before, I could make this a lot more short, but I'd have to start doing a little bit more complicated code, so I'm not going to do that this time. We'll work our way up to it if you guys like these types of tutorials that are a little bit more professional, I guess I'd say. And I want to pass in the tablespoon text view, which is the text view I want to change. So we're going to pass in the double to convert, and we're going to say we want that, which is going to be teaspoons in this situation, because we are in the update unit types using teaspoons method, and we're going to pass in and say we want to make it a tablespoon, and the whenever this conversion is made, we want to update the text view for the tablespoon. Okay, and I went in there and created those for each one of these guys. You can see here, tablespoon, cups, ounces, pints, quarts, gallons, pounds, milliliters, liters, milligrams, and milligrams. So I just did that to make everything a little bit shorter. Okay, so now I need to make that method, which we've been asking to do things here a whole bunch. So I'm just going to go public, void, update unit text fields using teaspoons. And what's it going to receive? Well, it's going to receive a double, which I'm going to call it the double to convert, because that's what it is. And then I'm also going to receive a quantity, of course, which is going to be the quantity that we're converting to, just like you saw there. And I'm going to call this um, the unit converting to. And then what else are we going to do? Well, we're going to put a text view, of course, inside of there. And that's going to be the text view that we're going to update. I'll just call that the text view. I could call it the text view to update. Whoops. Text view to update. That would be funny. Um, which would be perfectly fine. It makes the code more readable. Do whatever works for you. All right. So we'll have to create a quantity here. And I'm going to call this unit quantity. 
like that, and equal to new quantity. And I'm going to pass in the double to convert. There it is. And I'm also going to pass in the unit type, of course. So unit teaspoons. And then after that, I'm going to come in and create a string. And I'll just call this temp unit because it's just going to perform an action once and then never really do anything ever again. And I'm just going to go unit quantity convert to, and this is going, it's going to convert from teaspoons to the unit converting to that guy right there and then I can just say to string on that quantity and it is going to print out not only the value but it's also going to print out the unit type and then after that I can just go hey text view I want you to set the text to the temp unit now that I have that set up I'm going to also go and update unit types using other so let's come up here see this guy right here and you can see that it's being passed and told that it's a leader is what we're shooting for here so let's come on down here and let's create it now so, bounce in here and it's going to be public void update unit types using other then it's going to be passed a quantity just like you saw unit and I'm gonna call that the current unit like that and then we're gonna do much the same thing we're gonna create a double and we're gonna call this the double to convert and that's going to of course have to be converted into a double and what we're gonna pass in there is we're gonna go okay what's in the amount text view which is on our screen or in our app and we're gonna say get our text from that and then we're going to also say at the end convert that into a string for me there we go now we got our double now we want to create our quantity type and like I said everything is very very similar here we can come up here and just grab this guy if we want just to compare what's different so let's come down here drop that right there we're gonna create a quantity however we are not going to have teaspoons in this situation we're going to have whatever the current unit is that was passed in so if it's going to be tablespoons that we're converting that's what we want to put inside of there so that's that quantity then we want to create a string for the teaspoon text view because it's special and value in teaspoons is going to be equal to the current unit or the current quantity selection so let's go up here and change the name of this to the current quantity selected I like that better makes more sense current quantity selected and then we have to convert it to a teaspoon and we're gonna go quantity unit teaspoons to do that and then we're going to say that we want that converted to strings there we are then we want to set the text view for our teaspoon text view teaspoon text view set text and then it's going to be value in teaspoons love code completion and then we're going to have to create a, another new method for everything else and this is going to be called update unit text fields using teaspoons and to this guy we're going to pass in our double to convert and let's go down to the next line and we're also going to pass our current unit for this guy and then we're also going to pass in our quantity why do I keep spelling quantity wrong just do that which is going to be tablespoons in this situation each one's going to be different of course and then finally we're going to pass in the text view that we want updated there it is now let's go and do that for every single other option and of course come up here and type in text field sorry about that and then let's do this for every possible option and there we go and then after we got that set up we need to set the currently selected unit to the number in the editable text box and if you don't remember this is where we are check if the unit in the spinner equals the current text view if yes we want to make the values equal for both the editable text box and then down inside of the grid view for that same thing that's just to make sure that they always remain equal and to do that very simple we're gonna say is the current unit name is it gonna be equal the current quantity selected and then we're gonna go and get its unit and get its name if it is we want to create a text view text by taking the value in the editable text box in our app and then we want to add on the currently selected unit in the spinner so we're gonna go string and get our current unit text view text so I'll just call it that and we want to go get the double to convert and then add on to that a little space here and then we're going to put in the current quantity selected and get its unit and its name then we want to get the currently selected quantities unit name and then tack on to it dash text view and the reason why we want to do that basically we want to get whatever the current quantity is and then put text view at the end of it so that everything's more dynamic and this is from the activity main.xml layout file of course so we're going to go string and the current text view name and go current unit text view oh no current quantity selected and get the unit 
and get the name. That's how we can dynamically sort of work with these guys. And then at the end of that, put underscore, underscore text view, or text view. There we go. And also let's put current text view now. Well, now that we have that, we want to get our resource ID so that we'll be able to use find view by ID. And how you get your resource ID is just go int current ID is equal to, a whole bunch of stuff getting covered in this tutorial. Uh, we're going to go resources, and we're going to say that we want to get our identifier. And how we get that is we're going to pass in the current text view name, put in ID there, and then go main activity this and get package name. And that is going to return the ID for whatever the current text view name is. All right, very useful technique. And now all we need to do is just create an instance of the text view we want to change. So get a text view current text view and we have to cast it to a text view of course and find view by ID and we have the ID because we just went and got it cool beans then we just have to put the right data in the right text view so current text view set text and then inside of that it's gonna be current unit text view text and we just got one more method to create and it is this one right here and then we are done our app is ready to go and people are gonna look at it and they're gonna be like wow that's really cool <laughs> so let's go public void update unit text field uh, with teaspoon and it's going to be passed a double, if I can spell double right. Doing this stuff in my head like this sometimes makes me a little goofy. Okay, so double to convert. It's actually not the code writing, it's the trying to say the right words to you guys. Um, so I'm going to go current unit and make sure this is uppercase U. All right, so what we're going to do here is update the text field using teaspoons. And we have to do a couple more things inside of here. We're also going to not only get the current unit, but get the preferred unit. Do we want to convert unit type and this is I'm going to call this preferred unit and then the text view that we're going to be updating and I'm going to call that target text view all right now that I have all of those set up I need to create a quantity again and I'm going to call this the current quantity selected because that's what it is is equal to new let's go next line spell quantity right quantity and we're going to pass it the double to convert and we're going to pass it its current unit that's going to tablespoons or whatever and then we just need to convert from whatever the current unit is to teaspoons and then convert from teaspoons to what we want to get to so let's just go string and let's just create this as a temp text view text is equal to make this uppercase and we're going to go current quantity selected and we want to convert it to teaspoons so and then we want to convert it from the teaspoons oops let's get rid of that to our preferred unit preferred unit which is going to be cups or pretty much anything that isn't teaspoons and then we just call two string on it and that's going to output both the value as well as the unit type pretty cool and then after we have that we can just go target text view that guy right there set the text to the unit value as well as the unit type temp text view text boom and i have an extra little curly bracket on there See if there's anything else I made an error on. And up here I needed to put in an extra curly bracket. So it must have got away from me there. And everything looks good. Don't see any errors anyway. So let's run it. Okay, made a little bit of an error here. No problem about that. What I need to do is go in here and put Derek Bannis inside of here. Of course, yours is going to be different. How to know what to put inside of there, though, is to go into main activity, and you can see there's the package name right there. So just make sure that that is the same for your Android manifest.xml file. Another thing I wanted to do is down here in the style section, I'm going to put at style forward slash theme dot app compat and that's going to make that work and one other thing i need to go into each of these text views that i have here in my grid layout and make them black okay so every single one of those has black inside of it those text views just in the grid layout so you can see right here there's black okay and there's black see so just do that for every single thing over inside here text view wise and that'll fix it and now let's run it and see if it works Okay, so here is the conversion app, little Android right there, the default logo, and you can see right here I type in convert from, I can put anything in there, and whenever I switch over, it automatically converts to all of the other different unit types. So, does exactly what I want. Okay guys, so I covered a lot in this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. Of course, feel free to leave any questions and comments below. Otherwise, till next time.